Make it strong. Hello. Hi. Hello. Beautiful. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Very good. I think. I tell you, Kemba. Very good. My name is. Oh, let me speak my own little dialogue. I can see what say. Pero Hindi Rezal. So. <laughs> Don't call me Jose Reza. I call him Jose Andrews. Galinza, Ghana. Hindi, Philippines. Okay. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I think we passed here to Legaspi in on March 1st, but we didn't stop here. I didn't dream that I would stop here. I didn't dream that I'll meet beautiful people and handsome girls like you. So, what do I mean? It is not by accident that we are here. It is the plan of God that today, 29th of, is it 29th today? No, 28th of December 2015, all of us will be here. It is the plan of God that today, this morning, we will be studying about devotional life. It is the plan of God that, yes, I will smile and you smile back. I will sing and we will sing together. So, once again, welcome to devotional life. Before we begin, let's do some dynamics here. If you are happy and you know, clap your hands. I understand. If you are not happy. So let's try another one. If you are angry and you know, stamp your feet. Why are you angry this morning? Why are you angry? Okay. If you are happy and you know, clap your hands. If you are happy and you know, and you really want to show. If you are happy and you know, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, say ha ha. Ha ha. If you're happy and you know, say ha ha. Ha ha. If you're happy and you know, and you really wanna show. If you're happy and you know, you say ha ha. Ha ha. If you're happy and you know, you do that too. Ha ha. If you're happy and you know, you do that too. Ha ha. If you're happy and you know, and you really want to show. If you're happy and you know, you do that too. Ha, ha. Okay, in fact, honestly, I'm happy because I nearly canceled my committee for so many reasons. But like I said, when God has a plan, he always has ways to make those plans come through. We are here and we have beautiful dreams. I don't know if Kuya here want to be a handsome TV presenter. I don't know whether he wants to be one of the famous basketballers in Gillas, playing and scoring all the three points for the country of Philippines. I don't know Ate, if she wants to be the next beautiful Miss Universe. I don't know your dreams. I don't know. But if it is a plan of God, God will make it happen. Amen? Amen. That is what I know about my life. God is good, not sometimes, not certain times, not other times, but all the time. That is what God is, and that is who God is. So let me assure you, God is good. Whatever plans He has for you, He has for me, it will come through. Amen? Amen. Sierra, sometimes I get worried, I get stressed over so many things. Thinking, God, why? Why? It's taking long. But, one of the lessons that we will learn in our study will show us that God needs not to be doubted. We need to. 
Hold on to God. Now let's sing another song. Oh, friend, you love Jesus. Oh, yes, I do. No, I'm not sure you love Jesus. <laughs> we got that song this week. Oh, friend, you love Jesus. Oh, oh yes, I, I love Jesus. Are you sure you love Jesus? I'm, I'm sure, sure I love Jesus. Jesus. And why do you love Jesus? It's why I love Jesus. Because he first loves me. That's the reason we all want to love me. Now, what is devotional life? 
Uh, what is devotion? <laughs> yes, you can speak. Oh, Sebuano, Visayan, Tagalog, Biko, Bicolano, all is welcome. <laughs> Translator. <laughs> Even if there's no translator, I understand. That's the secret about me. Okay. No, I understand. Okay. So, what is devotional life? Get it. Any language, any dialect. I must see. I don't know what I'm saying. Please. 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 Yes, the spirit is impressing on your heart to tell me something about devotional life. Dimpo and Sina, right? Charming. If you want to speak, go ahead. So, what is devotional life? I mean, word that the pastor says in your command, I really go into devotion. Worshiping God. Okay. And what would you say is fellowship? Fellowship. Okay. Or mingling with others. Okay. Mingling with others. Very good. And let me say all our answers are right. Why? Because there are part of the lessons that I have to break it down and I did not share. Because my first section, we had lots of young people and we have to bring it down to our level. People are devoted to certain things. Some are devoted to their worship. Some are devoted to their music. Some are devoted to their TVs. If you dare change the channel from GMA to whatever, you are dead. And that is devotion. People are devoted to their girlfriends. Their girlfriends are shabby. And they are tired. But because they are devoted to them, they will always carry them in their back. They will be walking and still like a shaking. But because of the devotion, he's always trying to show the girlfriend that I love you from the bottom of my heart. In fact, if you fall from the sky, no matter pirate I am, I will catch you and you will fall. <laughs> People are devoted in so many ways. Devotion is either to something or to someone. And from this lesson, we will find out that it is not to something that has nothing to do with our salvation, but it has to be someone that can save us, that can give us eternal life. So your answers are right. Now we'll go back to what the dictionaries define what devotion is. ISB. ISBE is International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. The definition it gives to devotional life can be found in Acts chapter 17, verse 23. Let me confirm again. Acts chapter 17, verse 23. Let's read from what is there. We are reading to find out what devotional life is. And it will answer to all the answers that we give. We will learn about a group of people and their devotion was to something and not to someone. Can someone read for us? Acts 17, verse 23. Acts 17, verse 23. Can someone read for us? 
We are learning what devotional life is. For us, I passed by and beheld your devotion, I found an altar with an inscription to the unknown God. Whom therefore Thank you very much. Paul was walking through a city of Santa Elena and he saw so many things and these beautiful things with the inscription to the unknown God and they were worshipping him and Paul said they were worshipping thinking that it is the God of heaven, but ignorantly, it was not. They did not know that what they are doing is worshiping the God of heaven, or they know that they are worshiping the God of heaven. But on the opposite, it was not. Sometimes, people are worshiping their TV. I like my TV because every time I come here, I feel the presence of God. So even if it's Sabbath, I will enjoy GMA. God is good, on the time, no church. That is a devotion. They are ignorantly there and they think it's God. Some people are also devoted to their beauty. I call my granddad. Ole. Because papaya. These are two products I have used before, so I like it and I use them a lot. People are devoted to their beauty, so they can spend two hours in front of the mirror. Can you imagine that grabbing? <laughs> now, these are things that people are devoted to. All called say, objects of worship. So, there are devotions that are about something and not about someone. We read also from Job chapter 15 verse 4 and the Hebrew language help us to understand devotional life to be prayer. So some also consider devotional life as what? Prayer. Yes, when we go deep down also it says meditation. But in the Greek, we understand devotion, sebastema, or sebastmata, to be devotion, but it comes from a root word. We will go there very soon. Now, let's come to modern language and modern English. How many of us have heard of Miriam Webster? Dictionary, Miriam Webster Dictionary, very good. Let's read some also the meaning of devotion from this place. Devotion from Miriam Webster Dictionary. It says, Devotion is a feeling of strong love or loyalty. Having a strong love or loyal to someone. And like I said earlier on, I know one who is inspired. And the girlfriend is at the back. And always he wants to make the girlfriend happy. So he will try to back the girlfriend. And the girlfriend said, no, we will all fall. But still, this queer says, I want to do it. Can you guess that queer? It's me. OK. Let's go on. We have strong love, strong loyalty to someone. And not to God. Miriam Webster continues to say that devotion can also be for the use of time, money, energy, or anything for something special to us. This is also can be what? Devotion. Because of that, people live their life. Walam pera, walam hani. Maron pera, maron hani. Right? So all the time is money, nothing else. Some consider it in beauty. So all the time, 
beauty, I have to look beautiful. And every color you can see here. Sometimes you meet them and there is no difference between them and Christmas tree. Because for them, beauty is their devotion. Other times also, it is about energy. Someone can go to the gym and the whole day just want to grow muscles. And if you look at his arm and you look at the size of mosquito, it's the same. So I ask myself, why would this guy grow muscles like that? But because they are devoted, they spend their time in all of them. This morning, I want to ask you a question. What are you devoted to? Are you devoted to someone or to something? Okay. If it is someone, who is this person? If it is something, what is that thing? Let's read the last definition from Miriam Webster. And I'll go back to the book. Devotional life also, according to Miriam Webster Dictionary said, is prayer, worship, or other religious activities that are done in private, rather not in religious activities. In other words, people have a prayer life, a worship life, that they do it in their private rooms every time, and not only when it's midweek. So, rain or sand, because certain people are devoted, they want to show that, yes, I'm a good seven-day Adventist. They only go to check whether it's Typhoon, Glenda, or Typhoon, whatever. They will walk through the Typhoon for the church pastor to see. Oh, a devoted Christian. Friends, devotional life is not a journey that we take to God and therefore we do it when it's raining or we do it when it's midweek, but it's a devotional life and journey with God. We take step with God every time, every day, everywhere, no matter the condition. When I am able to do this, that is when I have strong, good, positive, use all the adjectives to describe your devotion and you are perfect. When I make a journey with God, but not a journey to God, I have great devotional life. Now, let's break it down. Where is God? In the church? God is in heaven. And for us to feel his presence, he lives in our heart. God is a relational being. So if we say we are going to God, imagine how much we need to spend to go to space. Then we go beyond the stars and the moons and enter into the third most part of heaven. It's very far. So if we think our devotion is to God, we will never get to Him. Because we will keep going and at a point we will not see God, we will not meet God and we will get tired. But if we walk with God, like we read from the Bible in Genesis, Enoch walk with God, we will always be successful. When we see that Emmanuel, God is with us. As few minutes ago we were celebrating Christmas, a child will be born and his name will be called Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. If we have this understanding that God is always with us, friends, we will have a positive relationship with God. So point number one that I want us to understand. Devotional life, it is not a journey that we go to God and come back and do whatever we want, but it's a journey that we have with God and that is imparting our lives every day, everywhere, and in every situation. Please, do you understand? Okay. Why am I saying this? 
friends, it gets to a point that church becomes so boring. Yes or no? Church becomes so boring that when the pastor is preaching, Facebook looks brighter and clear and beautiful. So, let me browse. Church becomes boring and it's actually boring. So reading the Bible in the morning. Uh -uh. Let me read what my friends sent to me from Viber and WhatsApp. And those of us who have Instagram, oh man, beautiful pictures. They were standing in front of Jolly B. <laughs> you see the problem with devotional life? When it is to God, it gets boring because God is far from rich. When it is about something, our devotional life, our Christian life, even becomes boring and we don't enjoy it anymore. But when we see our devotional life as a relationship between us and God, God loved us and we are showing love to Him no matter the situation. Bible reading will be exciting. People are devoted to something and not to God. Books, and like I said, girlfriends, and like I said, beauty. So when they go to church, and the church pastor is wearing the same baron he wore two weeks ago. What is wrong with this pastor? Why? Always coming to church with one baron. What is wrong with it? You know, because we always want to see beautiful things because that is what we are devoted to. We don't see what is supposed to be seen in the church. We see what is rather wrong with people. When we see God as the center of our devotion, everyone that comes to church, whether with half shoe, whether with torn pants, whether with t-shirt, whether with old baron or new, that person is welcome because that person is loved by God as we are also loved. And so point number two that I want us to understand. Our devotion should not be centered on something, but it has to be centered on God. Our devotion is not supposed to be about something, about anything, but it has to be about God and God alone. When we have these two points established, we are getting closer to a positive devotional life. The problem with our devotional life is sometimes we see it like, okay, earlier on friends were sharing, worship in the morning. So once I do my worship in the morning, I can enjoy this kind of song any time, any time of the day. There's one song also I was trying to show my friends and they were not getting it. We like to sleep all day and party all night. We like to sleep all day and party all night. It's a, a song that some of my friends like listening to Ray. Friends, we know the rest of the secular songs that we listen to. Why? Because I did my devotion in the morning. Morning devotion. I have never had afternoon devotion. Have you heard of afternoon devotion before? Yes or no? Walan, afternoon devotion. Walan, evening devotion. We have only morning devotion. And once I am done with my morning devotion, the rest of the day, I don't care. I love it. <laughs> I can do whatever I want, sing whatever I want, and eat everything I want because I was with God in the morning and He's waiting for me tomorrow morning so I can be of myself. That is when we see devotional life to be something that we go to God and once we have gone to God and talk to Him, it is done. This is wrong understanding of devotional life. This is what Paul was talking about in Acts chapter 17, verse 23. The people were doing things that they thought they are right, but it was wrong. Now, what does it mean to have devotional life? 
What does it mean to be a devoted person? What does it mean to live this life every day? Let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 25. We are reading about a man called Simeon. Luke chapter 2, verse 25. Please, if you have it, you can read for us. Luke 2, 25. We will be done very soon. Don't fear. Mm -hmm. Luke 2, 25. <laughs> at masipag sa kabanalan na nag-aantay ng kaaliwan sa Israel at sumama suma, suma sa kanila ang Espiritu Santo Isa na lalaki sa Jerusalem pangalan ni Simeon siya ay masipag at matuwi just read all the descriptions about this man. This man was hired. Meaning, he is devoted to God and God alone. Number three, it says Masipa. Meaning, he was hardworking, he was dutiful to everything when it comes to things about worship. He doesn't do it anyhow. Just missed. That's what I've been hearing. He doesn't work like that. He was waiting also for the promised Messiah. He was waiting for the consolation of the Israel nation. That's what the English Bible said. Meaning, he was also waiting for Jesus to come. Here we are. And I was saying earlier on, any time I hear about typhoons, I get scared. I get worried because I don't know how to swim. Yes. So I want to be at a place where there is no typhoon. So even if it flies to the rooftop, I have, I have no problem. I don't have to worry about swimming. Whenever I hear about typhoons, I get scared because people will have difficulty in sleeping. We went to the market. On our way, it rained. When we arrived, it rained. <laughs> and I was using tent. My, rain, my, my tent got wet and I had no place to sleep. And I was there understanding problems people face whenever their roofs, their roofs are ripped off. Friends, Life here on earth is not pleasant. Simeon was looking for hope. We are looking for hope. Yes. While he was doing it, he had a positive relationship with God. Devotional life, devotion means having a relationship with God. Not just any kind of relationship. Not just traffic light on and off. Not like the fire service type. Some Christians are fire service Christians. They only go to church when it's Sabbath. That's how fire service people work. They only go to work when there is fire. Friends, Simeon was not like that. His devotion with God was 24 7. Seven days a week, 365 days in a year. His devotional life was to a time that till Jesus came is what we read from the Bible. And because of that, the Holy Spirit was upon him. This is Bible like hell. Very good. Ten minutes and we are done. Now, we also read about Job in Job chapter 1 verse 1. You can take it down later you read. Job was a sincere and a faithful man. Because of that, God was with him. We read also in the book of Genesis, and Enoch walked with God. That is having a devotional life. We read in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16, 
the three Hebrew boys also had a relationship with God that Nebuchadnezzar urged them to worship images. They said, we are not careful. Whether you are a barangay captain, whether you are a country president, we will not worship the image of God. Why? Because they had a relationship with God. And that relationship compelled them to always live for what is right. Friends, to have a positive relationship with God is when all your friends are doing the wrong thing and you will still say, I am a seven day Adventist. I will leave what my parents taught me. That is what it means to have a devotional life. You may not be also a seven day Adventist. We read in Acts chapter 10, verse 2 and verse 10 that, yes, there is a man called Colinius. Colinius was not a seven day Adventist. He was not a vegetarian. He was not anything. He was just someone. But the Bible says he was a devoted man to God. In fact, when we read from the book Acts of the Apostles, Ellen White says that this man had altar in his home. It means the presence of God was in his house. He wakes up in the morning and is committed to God. In the afternoon, yes. In the evening, yes. Not on and off. He had a great relationship with God. And that is what we need to learn from. Earlier on, we were learning about David. David was a young boy. Here we are. And I think, I tell you are the youngest here. How old are you? Twelve. And some the age of Jesus when Jesus was teaching rabbis in the temple. Jesus had a devoted life with God. And yes. Because of that, the Holy Spirit was always giving him wisdom. Now, let me go back to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of God is the beginning of what? Wisdom. It did not say, if you want to be wise, go to UP. It did not say, if you want to be wise, go to AUP. Only have the fear of God. That is relationship. A devotional life to God, and God will bless you. And also, to those of us who want to be Miss Universe, it's simple. Have the fear of God. And don't worry about the cast of fire. God will bless you. And that was what I was saying earlier on. God has a plan for your life, but it takes your commitment, your devotion with Him, that will make it happen. Friends, Yes, devotional life is about reading the Bible. Yes, praying. Yes, going to church. But don't do it out of form. Do it out of love. I will say how we can have a positive relationship with God and we are done. Devotional life. How can I have a positive devotional life? This is what... I believe you can see from here. It says Christ method. And the definition of Christ is break down for us. C H R I S T. Now it says the Christ Saline. Allow Christ to challenge you to live. Allow Christ to challenge you to live for the faith. How can we do this? It says. Okay, let's go back. What is the C? Commit. Okay, can we read together? Christ method says. Anytime we mention Christ, 
To have a devotion with him, we need to commit. Point number two says, What is point number two? Okay. Honor. Christ with all my life with morals and values. Don't only study in the church and be a Christian in the church and around the church compound and go to the barangay and do anything. We go to R. R says respect Friends, this is a command from God. And it's also with blessings. If we respect our parents, if we respect our teachers, if we respect authorities, God is going to lead us to success. Whatever we need in life. If we try to want commit ourselves to Christ, we honor Him, respect our elders and leaders. God is going to bless us. The next one is I. It says what? Okay. We need to involve ourselves in everything that will lead us to spiritual growth and also wisdom and intelligence. Friends, yes, they said beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Walter Pearson will say, beauty is from the heart. You can have a beautiful body, but if your heart is ugly with God, you are panicked. Okay? Now let's go to the next one. It says, Okay. Seek God. And don't do it like the fire service type. I only seek him when there is no money in the house. Don't do it the fire service way when there is no fancy. Don't seek God only when someone is sick. But let this seeking be every time. Everywhere. Always. When we are doing this, that is when we have a great and positive relationship or relational life with God. Now let's go to the last letter. And it's T. Okay, when we commit, when we honor, when we respect, when we involve, when we seek, when we take the initiative, that is when we have a positive relational and devotional life. And this is done every day. Daniel, as we read from the Bible, the three Hebrew boys, Ananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, they did it. Jesus did it. The rest of the beautiful Bible characters that we read from, Esther, Deborah, all of them did this. And God was with them. If this is your desire, if this is your prayer, let me see by the raising of your hand. If you want to have a devotional life, by committing your ways, by honoring Christ, by respecting Him, by involving, by taking the, by seeking and taking the initiative. Thank you very much. When you are able to do this, that is when you have a great 
positive devotional life, not a 24-7 one. And later on, you'll be doing whatever you want. God bless you. Yes, my time is up. And once again, I've denied you of questions. Okay. Kuya, can I have two minutes to ask if there is any question? Thank you very much. Any question about devotional life? Okay. If there is none, it's two things. Question for uh, for the benefits of us all. So okay. How can we continue our good devotional uh, devotional life to God, even we are so busy? How can we continue our devotional life to God, even if busy? Busy. Okay. How can we help Priya to answer? This question. He's asking me, but can someone help with an answer? How can we have or continue our devotional life with God? To God, even if we are busy, like the busy bee. Uh huh. How? Question. We have 24 7, 24 hours, right? Do we stop to eat? Oh, very good. So tell me where are all your food and I'll go there and eat all your food. <laughs> Do we pause in our busy lives to eat? Okay, I just told you to say no. Just show me where you come on the fancy. Sometimes. Especially the calamansi one. That's my favorite. Just show me and I'll go there and finish all for you. We stop. And we eat, right? Friends, we need to also prioritize God. The problem with our life right now is that God is used like cake only for our birthdays. And not bread for our breakfast every morning. We are using God as a birthday cake, so once a year. We see God like 25th December, so we only meet him in Christmas. God is a necessity, someone said. God is someone that we need. And therefore, no matter how busy we are, we need to seek God to direct our path. How can we do it? Friends, let's make at least 10 minutes. Let's make 10 minutes available despite our busy schedule and talk with God, study with God. And God, through the presence of the Holy Spirit, will bless us. There was nobody busy in the Bible than Jesus. Yet still, he found time to pray to God. He lived in a time that there were no hospitals. He lived in a time where there were no fast food joints. So every time he was going places, providing for people their daily bread. He was going around healing people that are sick. Yes, still, Jesus had a time to go down on his knees. Jesus found time to pray. We can also find time. Jesus studied the word of God. Yes, he was busy. He had a lot of assignments. But don't forget what Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7 and 6 said. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So no matter how busy you are, if you are able to spend 10 minutes before you start your assignment, you always get perfect. I underline this statement with red ink. If you are able to spend 10 minutes with God, whether in the study of the word or whether in prayer, friends, all your assignments will fall in place. This is how we can have a devotion continuously with God no matter how we are busy.
Thank you very much. Is your question answered? Praise God. If there is no question, let's stand for the closing prayer. Question. <laughs> oh, where is it? Me. Okay. Uh, what's the possible reason why they become, we became boring sometimes with our devotion? What's the possible?